What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question. We have to find the coordinate or the coordinates on this function, 2x plus root x, where the tangent is going to be parallel to y equals 3x plus 8. And if the tangent is going to be parallel to this line, that means it's going to have the same slope as this line. So we're basically looking for where the slope of the tangent is going to equal 3, right? Because this line here has a slope of 3. So what we have to do is we have to come up with a general expression for the slope of the tangent for this function. The way we do that, we know that that's going to equal the uh, difference quotient, right? f of a plus h minus f of a all over h. And then once we get that, we're going to plug in that h value of 0. So to plug everything in here, notice that f of a plus h, we would plug in a plus h for all the x values. So we would end up having 2 times a plus h plus root a plus h. Right, This square bracket here is this, f of a plus h, and then we're going to be minusing f of a, so we'd plug in a for all the x values, and then that's going to be all over h, like that. So we got this big limit to uh, work with here. Now this one is a little bit tricky because usually we know if we have square roots we're going to be rationalizing. Or if we have values like this, then notice like the two a's are going to cancel out. We're just going to have the h's by themselves. But what if it's mixed up? Notice we have a 2x and then a root x. We don't just have a root x or we don't just have a 2x. We have both of them in the same function. Well, what you want to do then is you actually want to take this limit. I'll show it to you in steps. And you want to split it up into two. So what I'm going to do, first off, if we distribute this negative in, I'm going to combine this root a plus h and then this uh, root a. So we're going to end up having root of a plus h minus root a, that portion, plus this 2 a plus h minus that 2a right there. That's going to be another portion. So I kind of rearranged it and then put these similar expressions together. And the reason why you want to do that is because now what you can do is you can take this denominator of h and split it up into both of these expressions. So what would end up happening, if we continue this over here, we would end up getting the limit as h approaches 0 of root a plus h minus root a. That's going to be all over h plus this plus here, 2 a plus h minus 2a all over h, like that. And this limit here, you can actually distribute to both of these. It's a property of limits. So what you can do is you can actually split these up into two limits. So you could write the limit as h approaches 0 over here as well. And now you can just work with these separately. And we know how to work with both of these separately. And then at the end, we can combine the two expressions. So with this limit here, we know that what we have to do is rationalize it. So we have root a plus h minus root a all over h. So we've got to multiply this by root a plus h plus root a over root a plus h plus root a, like that. And then over here, for this limit, we could distribute. Notice the two a's would cancel out. We would end up with 2h over h. Notice that the h's cancel out. And we would just end up with 2, and then there's nothing to, there's no h's to plug in 0 for. So this expression here would just end up equaling 2. Right? This part here just ends up equaling 2. Over here, there's going to be a little bit more work. We're going to have the limit as h approaches 0. Uh, when we multiply these two terms, we would have a plus h minus a. Right? We're just multiplying the n's. Square roots go away. And then these two, I'm going to keep separate. And then notice that the a's cancel out here, right? a minus a is 0. And then we have an h left at the top. And then that h and this h are going to cancel out. So we're going to be left with 1 at the top. And then we could plug in 0 for h because this went away. We could plug in 0 for h right there. Then we'd have root a plus root a, 
which would end up just giving us 1 over 2 root a. So this limit over here ends up being 1 over 2 root a. <laughs> and then this limit here ends up being 2 plus 2. So that ends up being the general expression for the slope of the tangent of this entire function here. So it's almost like we found the slope of the tangent for this function 2x, which is just 2, and then this function root x, which is uh, 1 over 2 root a, and then we combine them. Right? So this a value here represents any x value on this function. You could plug it in here, and that's going to give you the slope of the tangent at that specific x value. But we're already given the slope of the tangent. We're trying to find the x value at which the slope of the tangent is going to be 3. So then all you do is, this is going to be like the second step of the question, you take this expression, 1 over 2 root a plus 2, find out when it equals 3. And that's going to happen when? So bring the 2 over, so you'd have 1 over 2 root a equals 1. This is going to be over 1. You could cross multiply. 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times 2 root a is 2 root a. Divide both sides by 2. And then you could square this. You could square that, right, to get rid of this square root. So a would be 1 over 4. So that's the x value on this function where the slope of the tangent is going to be 3. But that's the x value right there. We want the full coordinate. Uh, so we got the 1 over 4. So to get the y coordinate, we just plug in 1 over 4 into the function. So what's f of 1 over 4 going to be? Uh, it would end up being, what, 2 times 1 over 4 plus the square root of 1 over 4. So it would be 2 times 1 over 4 is 1 over 2. Square root of 1 over 4, we could square root the numerator, square root the denominator. That would be 1 over 2. And then um, over here, we would end up getting what? 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 is just 1. So at a point 1 over 4 and 1, right? That's the coordinate. The slope of the tangent on this function is going to be parallel to this line, or it's going to equal 3.